well, typical fashion. You do the fronts and then the rear start giving you fits. Look at that. We got a leak. Uh oh. Our rear wheel seal is leaking, peeing out a little bit. Hey, another one working on Sadie one C10. LS swapped. I was hoping to get to do the brakes in the winter. Nope, gotta do them now. As you saw, it's leaking. Might as well crack open that differential. Change the fluid out on that too. While we're at it. So let's get into it. So I get you in here, rear wheel. You can see it's dripping. It's drippy. Dripping on the concrete. Went ahead and sprayed down my, you know, these things right here. And how do I know that it's the brake seals that are leaking? Well, because my brake fluid reservoir is low. It's not the axle seals. Otherwise, I'd probably lock up the rear end by now. Anyways, so I'm gonna start by pulling this whole thing off. It's, you know, it's off the BMW wheel. We're gonna do this side first because it's the side that's leaking. Well, the garage is a mess. Stall's not really open. So we're gonna be doing this out in the driveway. So I got my jack underneath there, got a jack stand ready. We got a prop in the front so we don't end up going crazy flying down the road. As you can tell, cookies barking at me. All right, rear wheels off. We're supported there. Jack's lowered so I can get more headroom. So I can duck in here and look and see what's going on. As I mentioned, I got everything soaking with WD. Lines actually look pretty good. I have the lines to replace them. I'm probably not gonna replace them, honestly. Drill brakes. Should be able to just pull them off. Hopefully, yank them back and off. Let's see if I can do that. Just like that. You can see it's it's a little a little gross in there. Don't look too bad though overall. At least it's working. Oh yeah. Oh yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Let's show you. Our wheel cylinder, you could, it's blowed out. Yeah, covered over everything, it's not good. Get down in there, looks like that is pretty uh, good. Actually got quite a bit of pad left on there. We probably could honestly just replace this wheel seal and, you know, run it. But with as much crap that's on here, I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to start by dousing it down with some brake cleans, cleaning up some stuff, and then we'll start pulling it apart. So if you're unsure about disc brakes, just go through, document every single piece and where it sits and how it's in there before you start tearing into it. Like we got a little springy here, you got your little adjuster thing down here, you got these things here, you got a spring on your spreader bar there. You just yeah, so just document how all the springs are, what position they're in, to where these hooks are facing. So biggest thing is, I've seen a couple people do it a couple ways, but you got a couple tools you can use. First, you can buy that majigger. For doing the pins, clamps for the springs, and of course, you know, a little prior. Alternatively, what you can use, hair pliers screwdriver so choose your poison I guess um, whatever but make sure you're disassembling it and reassembling it the way that it should be so I'm gonna go ahead and time-lapse this and pull it apart
So in about three minutes, we got this whole thing ripped apart. Another R2 half inch on the back side of this wheel cylinder. Now we'll go ahead and break that line, put the new one on, and either clean up our old parts, put it back together, or we'll use the new ones, which we're probably just gonna use the new ones. So the rear wheel cylinder, we got two three-eighths each side. If you're lucky enough, they'll come off like that. And then the line itself should be three-eighths as well. If that's rusted, you're probably gonna have to work it with some heat, penetrating oil, heat, penetrating oil. Don't snap it off, because then you're gonna be chasing it all the way through. But sometimes you get lucky and they break free without a whole lot of trouble. Oh. I need some heat. Be careful when you got this going because, you know, there's a lot of flammable stuff going around now around here. Just heat up your line. Get it nice and hot. Get some penetrating oil on it. Heat it up again, penetrating oil. Heat it up again, penetrating oil. Do about 10 minutes. And at some point, you should be able to get it out. it should come free oh yeah we broke free now you might be tempted to just kind of wing it I don't know if you saw how much that line moved just kind of work it back and forth just easily easy Easy. Take and get it through. No shame in taking time. Hold one's out. Just do a quick comparison, make sure they're both the same. Right there. Pop this plug out, get our brake fluid in, holes on there, put her on and should be good. New kit is gonna come with all new springs and pins and stuff, bushings. So you will have to reuse some stuff, basically emergency brake stuff. Your adjuster, your pins to go into your wheel cylinder, that thing, this washer. The rest of the stuff discard. I mean, 
by discard put off to the side in case you decide you don't know where it goes and you want to reuse the old stuff kind of thing i guess so yeah just um, replace this stuff with that stuff and reassemble i did go ahead and break that free it was frozen got it really well lubed up and now my adjuster spins freely did this a couple times cleaned up the threads with a uh, wire wheel and lubed it up with some disc brake caliper grease now she's spinning nice and freely you want those are spinning freely because your adjusters you know that's how they adjust your rear brakes find any sticking spots or whatever in here just clean them up same goes for these pins you can see i cleaned the one up compared to the other one you just you want them clean i got a clean surface to start see it's pitted though yeah, it'll still work fine just clean them up you want to put a light coat of grease on there do it but yeah i'm gonna clean all the rest of this stuff up and we'll be reassembling we'll go figure i push play with my dirty hands and i didn't play so let's go over this first i started by matching up the shoes to the old ones then the e-brake on the back side of here we put that on the dragging side that's the bigger because that's that's the one that does the most work you can tell that because it's bigger than that one so we put our little bracket in the back put that c-clip in there then we move down to this majigger which is our slack adjuster pop that spring in there put our guide pin in the back here and we put it through these are just simple, you just push them in and twist them, twist locks, as you saw me do. And we got that hanging. Next step we did is we put the little piston slider thing inside our wheel cylinder. So that way we could make sure it was all in there. And we connected this spring to here, up to here, putting our washer back in up here. Next, I attached this spring to here, and that seated everything down and over. Next, I moved over to here, affixated this pin to this front shoe. We ended up putting our slide bar in here with our pin facing the right way. So that's all in there. And then our wheel cylinder pusher over here. Put this spring on over here and that way it seated everything and we made it nice and you know able to adjust and i moved on to the bottom attached this spring right here and then our slack adjuster that we cleaned out got it just about right and put it in there in the back side and you can actually move these you know, spread them apart so you can slide that in there then you adjust it to where it needs to be Seated wise, get your drum with the hole in the bottom so you can adjust and you put it on. So for this next step, we went and filled our reservoir up because it was low. And now we're gonna bleed our brakes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this bleeder cover off. And we're just gonna crack it open and we're gonna let it gravity bleed. So by doing that, you just open it up and you watch the bubbles go boop, 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 boop. And when it stops bubbling and it's all fluid, it's bled. Tighten it, call it good. Start the furthest one away, which is this one. Go to the other one. If you gotta do the brakes, bleeding on the front, whatever, do those two. But that's how you do it. That's how the gravity bleed. Well, on our little test drive, of course, when you get it out before you get it up to speed, make sure you get on the brakes a couple times before really get into them because you know if something wants to go you want to be going slower not faster so seems like we got good brakes let's get it ripping
test drive when you get it going, what you're looking for, odd noises, clunks, grinding, squeaks, anything sticking, pulling to one way or the other, and of course, you don't stop. If you got all those things checked off and you're good, send it. I go on a little trip and then we'll go back home and make sure that that wheel is not hot. So slower speeds here. Nothing sounds like it's dragging. Nothing unusual, no weird ringing, tinging. I don't know. You know if you got a problem. I think we're good to go. So getting down here. It's a little warm. Should be. Driver's side here. Driver's side's actually a little hotter than faster side but it is so with that it's gonna wrap up doing drums on a 1981 Chevrolet C10 pretty simple questions comments concerns drop them down below and we'll see you on the next one